Okay, my friends, I have some more evidence to, pre to present about what seals all of the mud fossils and keeps them separated from the rest of everything and turns the contents into some other material. The outside is feldspar. You see that? Even though it has feathers. This was a goose or a duck or something. And it has feathers. And these feathers actually turned into feldspar because they were made of collagen. Same thing with the wrapping of bones. I believe they call it the periosteum. It's a, the ancients called it tunica. And you can see, you can actually see where it wraps together and folds right in and seams together. It's a fabric that wraps all the bones. Your skin is a fabric that wraps your everything around you so that your skin can move around and come back. All body parts, hold on. Whoa. Like this lung, which was DNA tested and CAT scanned and everything else. And it's, got, it's dense with blood and it has all of the same characteristics as a, a human lung and it's a left human lung even has a depression where the heart is in the back and died flat as a pancake like all my stuff because I believe there was a great flood Velikowski recorded we'll talk about that at some other point but this is also feldspar and every, the, 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 feldspar is the most well let's just look into what it says about feldspar but I'm going to tell you right now collagen is a protein Right, because collagen bonds with the aluminum. Let me just go go to the end, and then we'll, I'll show you how we got there. Collagen, which is, is everything here, is made of collagen. All the fabrics in your body, all the membranes in your body, even like the tendons and connective tissues, are heavy in collagen. Collagen bonds with aluminum silicates. It's a hundred percent of them. I'll show you that in a second. And a hundred percent of collagen comes from mammals. Alright, listen to this right now. Collagen is a protein made of amino acids which are in turn built of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Collagen contains specific amino acids, glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, and arginine. Now listen to this. Collagen makes up approximately 30 percent of the proteins within your body. These are tough and strong structures. They're strappy little buggers found all over the body in bones, tendons, and ligaments, and skin. In nature, collagen is found exclusively in animals, especially in the flesh and connective tissue of mammals. Collagen is part of the connective tissue that in the skin helps in firmness, suppleness, constant renewal of skin cells. Collagen is vital for skin elasticity. And for your lung to be able to expand and come back, it's, they're, they're rubbery, elastic fabrics that coat everything. And 100% of them turn into aluminum silicates. So this is all about collagen and feldspar. All right, I say all your feldspar is from aluminum and collagen. Now, this is about collagen. It says, under conditions, collagen structures and influence the protein metabolism. So they know that they can, it was demonstrated that metals under these conditions can influence collagen. And they're looking at it as a disease. And it said, in a conclusion, it says, it may be said based on the achieved results that aluminum has an effect on biological systems due to its bond with collagen structures. <laughs> Aluminum's bond with collagen structures. And I say all of this stuff is collagen if it coats a membrane or your skin or your lung or your feathers. So here it is right here, feldspar. A group of rock forming aluminum tectosilicate minerals. So they're aluminum silicates. And they containing also other locations such as sodium, calcium, potassium, barium, all the other stuff that's in your body. The most common members of the feldspar group are the plagioclases, feldspars and alkaline, da 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 da. Feldspars, feldspars make up about 60 
40% of the Earth's crust, 60% and 41% of the Earth's continental crust by weight. That's because it's all these tendons and muscle, you know, all these connective tissues. All right, this is Caesar, the goose, and he's right there. Uh, hold on a second, if you can see or not. All right, that's Caesar. Now, I have the microscope looking down pretty close right to his head here. Now, I'm going to show you what the fibers are in these felspars. You see that? You see the color? Look at the color very carefully. You see these little white fibers all over the place? You see all these little black spots? All right. The, the, there's a black spot and a fiber that anchors virtually everything in every creature, it appears to me. That's what I'm finding. And that black spot is is made to return those fibers to back to where they came from. Feathers, skin, organs, lungs, kidneys, hearts, your connective tissue, your tendons, they all have to stretch and come back. Okay, so you saw Caesar here and the pattern of his feathers, and that's what it is, Caesar Augustus. Now, this is a bone. I'm going to put this in the microscope next, and then we're going to do the the um, lung, and I got a whole batch of stuff. We'll look at about a half a dozen things. Hold on. All right, this is this is a lot less fabricy than the lung and so forth, but you can still see the little white fibers and the little black balls. And this is what coats this this bone right here, that little bone that's in the microscope right there, and it's broken off. See, the bottom's broken off, and it turns into basalt in the bottom. That's the littlest, tiniest piece. You see that white spot? That's the still bone right there. Almost nothing at all left of the bone. <laughs> you see that? That's the bone right there. That's the last, tiniest, little, tiny piece of bone. Now, I got the microscope shooting down on there. Let's take a look at it up in the microscope. I have to turn the lights off again. Here we go, right up there. There it is. There's that bone. That's all that's left of the bone in that bone. It's right here. See that? Everything else has transitioned. You see over here? I'm going to go to where it's all transitioned. This is all transitioned into what they would call basalts and stuff. But you can still see the, the membrane on the outside. And that looks like it was part of the center of the bone. I don't know. <laughs> if this doesn't freak you out, you got no freak left in you. This is a no-toe, and this is the skin of the no-toe. It's nothing but leather. I'm going to try to come in and home in on it. These are the little black balls, and there's all kind of little straps in here. You can't really see the straps all that well, because, but this is felspar as well. All right, you're going to be seeing this, the actual leather that coats this foot, and it's not a, sh a shoe. This was the foot, and there it is right there. We have found lots of these, and some of them are partially eroded, some of them are almost completely eroded, all the way down to the heel bone, and the strap, right there, that would have run up to the leg, right here. And they have springs instead of bones. And this one does too, but this one is in perfect condition, but you can see the actual spring mechanism in here and the pin if you see it in the right light it's right there and uh, and they were just they were different but they were pretty damn close all right now check this out I just showed you the no toe this is ba basically the same thing only it's a little older now these are the little straps and these are the balls what they, in tanning, they put a little chemistry in there and then they smash them and roll them. It's a little bit different. That's why the other ones were sticking up a little higher than these. Because this is rolled and flattened and so forth. Now, watch this. That right there is where everything is together. Now, 
I said there's all kind of straps. Well, I can prove that because right here is a hole where some of the straps got pulled open from, because, uh, you know, the, the, the pin that holds the belt together just works away at these things. Probably a couple extra pounds too, I'm not sure. <laughs> but here they are. And there's where the balls hold them. And, th and there is flexible stone. They say, oh, what's a flexible stone? A flexible stone is nothing more than a, a heavy fabric from some animal, a hide. All right, don't forget, felspars make up 60% of Earth's crust. Well, what does that mean? Listen to this. Here's some more proof that it's chemical weathering of felspars, which is skins and membranes and so forth, by hydrolysis, which means water, produces clay. And then even, like, they do call out the different types of clay, smectites and illolites and kaolinites, which are skin. The kaolin comes in skin colors. You see that? That's a piece of kale and it's still got some red blood in it. Kaolin is the fine, fine, fine clay that they use. They call it slip clay. It's just, it's, there's nothing, there's no grittiness to it. And that's skin color. That's the color of like facial skin. And it's the color of people, all different colors. You see that? That's kaolin. That's sheets of kaolin. I'm going to show you what your facial skin looks like near hair. Here's kaolin in the little micro shots, little bits and pieces of it. You see that? I just showed you the kaolin clay. This is somebody's face. <laughs> These are the hairs sticking out. And you can see the little hair edges. And there's chunks of skin that are just falling off, which is the, the um, kaolin clay. Okay, I guess I'll probably leave it at here. I think I've made my case with the kale and clay and the hairs and all the rest of the things from the biggest, giganticest creatures that anybody could possibly imagine. I can't, I can't account for it. These were the things that were written, the titans, the giants, the, the landscape was turned into, uh, these bodies were turned into landscape. All, all I can say.